To think about that, let's start from some intuition of what is the second order derivative. What is a second order derivative? In your understanding, let me get some answer from the last uh, row. Again. Uh, somebody, what, what is a second order derivative? How would you describe it? If a 10 year old comes up and asks you, what is a second order derivative? What would you say? Huh? <laughs> Yeah. It's a yeah, curvature, somebody said, yes? Like a second difference. Se second difference, you take a difference and you take it again, right? And uh, somebody also said curvature. <laughs> These are all very good answers, yes? The rate of change the rate of change. The rate of change of the rate of change, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, that's like taking final dif uh, second difference. Right, right, right. So so good, good. Let's let's actually uh do try to construct uh, an approximation from both viewpoints. One is curvature, right? So curvature can be positive or negative. Uh, so for example, on this point, is the curvature positive or negative? Positive, right? How do you tell? How do you tell the curvature is positive? The slopes increase, right? That's that's one thing. And uh, another another word for positive curvature is uh, what? It's con concave or convex, right? I mean, like the mathematical definition is uh, the mathematical saying is convex, but like it doesn't matter, right? Uh, uh, a convex function is a function where if you connect two points, right? the line is going to lie above that function, right? So, so that can be a, um, a, a test, uh, a test for, for, uh, for positive curvature, right? So, so here, we actually don't really know the value of the function anywhere other than these three points. So the only test we can do is to see if we average these two grid points, is it going to be higher or lower than the middle grid points, right? So, okay, so, so from an idea, idea from curvature, so uh, the second order derivative is greater than zero, means that, uh, well, approximately, I would say, that I have a u, uh, I have a u of i plus 1, so, so let's say this value is u0, u1, u2, u3. We'll, we'll use this notation, right? The u at xi is called ui. Let's use this convention to find a difference. So here, the middle point of these two values, let's say this is ui minus 1, this is ui plus 1, then this is ui plus 1 plus ui minus 1 divided by 2. So if the curvature is positive, that means this point lies above u of i. Or less than zero means this is less than u of i. So the idea is uh, actually the, the stronger the curvature is, the more difference it is, right? So, so the idea is can we construct an approximation being something times the difference between them. Something times ui plus 1 plus ui minus 1 divided by 2 minus ui. So times something. OK. And uh, uh, the question is, how do we construct that something? But Fourier expansion can be one way to find out uh, if you have a, a sinusoidal function, right? Yeah, that's, that's actually one way to find out uh, using Fourier expansion. And you can, if the function is actually Fourier series, uh, that's, that's, that's something you can find out using Fourier series. And uh, uh, another way to find out is another series, another type of series that is going to be more useful for non-periodic functions. Taylor. Taylor series, right. So Taylor series analysis starts by approximating a ui plus 1, which is 
actually u at finite difference, uh, ui plus 1 is u at exactly xi plus 1, right? And uh, let's imagine x plus 1 is actually xi plus a delta x. So delta x is the difference between xi and uh, xi plus 1. So Taylor series, using Mr. Taylor series, is going to be u at xi plus delta x times the derivative. And here I have a f uh, u also as a function of t, so I will write partial u partial x at xi plus half of delta x squared. Uh, we are going to be using Taylor series a lot in this class. Not just in finite difference, uh, in finite volume and uh, everything. So make sure you can write down Taylor series if you wake up uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so this is the Taylor series. And, and intuitively, it's like, OK, so I have a ui plus 1 here at xi plus 1, xi here, ui here, if the function looks like this. The value here is, first of all, is equal to this value and plus a correction from just a linear extrapolation from the tangent. And then there is a, this is the linear correction, and there is a quadratic correction coming from the uh, curvature, and then there is a cubic correction, etc., etc. right? For analytical functions, uh, basically for, for smooth enough functions, you are guaranteed to converge to the value of the function if you add enough of these corrections. So here, we only expand to uh, this term, and uh, the rest of them, we consider the function to be smooth enough that they are small. Okay, And so this, by the way, is ui, right? Now, ui minus 1 can be done with the same thing. So it's ui minus 1. And uh, uh, here, let's assume we have a uniform grid, which means x minus 1, xi minus 1 is equal to xi minus the same delta x. So this, using the same Taylor series expansion, except for I replace every delta x by minus delta x, right? So I'm looking at here. So the linear extrapolation is going to be working the opposite way, but the quadratic uh, correction is going to be the, 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 the same. So, OK, so I have a minus delta x times the same first order derivative. I have a plus, which is, um, which is be because I'm taking minus delta x squared times the same, uh, same second order derivative, right? So with this, with this Taylor series, we can see now what the average of ui plus 1 and ui minus 1 is. So the average is going to be ui average with ui is also ui, right? So the first term stays. I'm just going to write it uh, down here because uh, uh, the match. So average between this and this is ui. Average between uh, plus delta x times the first derivative and uh, minus delta x times the first derivative is zero, right? Because they cancel out. And then the average between the second derivative terms are again the same. So they all become the same. And the high order terms, we think it's small. I mean, they are small when delta x is small because they are going to be multiplied with delta x cubed and delta x to the fourth, et cetera, et cetera, right? So they can be made small by making delta x small, assuming u is a smooth function, OK? So now we can see the nice thing about subtracting the average with the value of ui because if I subtract the average with the value of ui, then I'm going to be subtract with ui. This is going to be 0. So the only thing I left with is a second order derivative times half of the delta x squared. 
right? So that means what should the question mark be? Now from the data series analysis, we have obtained that the average of the two nearby grid points minus the value of the current grid point is equal to canceled out, canceled out, half of delta x squared times the second derivative. So the second order derivative can be approximated by what times this? Huh? 2 over delta x squared, exactly. So this is going to be the first finite difference approximation we derive. Question? Yeah, should it be, um, well, can we add together the 2 uh, delta x squared over 2? Should it have been delta x squared over 1,000? Yeah, if we add them together, it'll be, uh, the 2 is going to be removed. Here we are looking at the average. Right, so we are taking the average between this term and this term. Okay. So the average of them is going to be just a, a half delta x squared, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah.